Hello, this is Steve Bonacongi from SOA Consulting Services with our tutorial on Angular 4. We're continuing a series of tutorials. This one is on a quick one on Shadow DOM. We'll just quickly discuss what it is and I'll give you a little small demo in my WebStorm development tool just to show you um, how to understand it. It is part of our routing series, so bear with me. Okay, here's the Shadow DOM. What is Shadow DOM? It's part of the web component standard. Every web page is represented as a tree of DOM objects. It allows you to encapsulate a subtree of HTML elements to create a boundary between one component and another. Shadow DOM is a it's the Shadow DOM subtree is rendered as part of the HTML document, but its elements are not part of the main DOM tree. Shadow DOM places a wall between the DOM content and the internals of the component. CSS styles of the custom component will not be merged with the main DOM CSS. Okay, why do we do this? it prevents possible conflicts with rendering styles and you'll clearly see this with my example okay so shadow DOM mode uh, angular 4 has a view encapsulation object and there's three different um, ways you can set it first um, is the view encapsulation native mode it uses the shadow DOM that is natively supported by the browser HTML and styles are not merged with the DOM of the web page. Styles of the component are not added to the head section of the page, but the styles of the component and its parents are encapsulated inside the component. Loosely speaking, your component has a new root, let's say a root shadow DOM component and, and all the styles of the component are encapsulated under that. I kind of view it as a namespace, name spacing within the DOM. Um, yeah, that's a, probably a good way to look at it. Okay, the other mode is view encapsulation is none. Does not use shadow DOM encapsulation. All the markup and styles will be integrated into the global web page DOM. The colon host selector will not work in this mode. There is no shadow DOM. Then is view encapsulated emulated, which is the default. This emulates the encapsulation of the shadow DOM. This instructs Angular to generate unique attributes for the styles of the component and will not merge with the styles of the web pages DOM. Basically, you get the shadow DOM feel, but it's not necessarily a true shadow DOM. But once again, it's like a namespacing issue. It makes sure that your component styles don't conflict with the web pages styles. Okay, so let's take a look at some code. Here's a little project I created called Shadow DOM. It's a seed project, an Angular CLI seed project. And basically what I did in the app component is I imported a view encapsulation and I defined the view encapsulation of the particular component. So let me go in here, let me start this. Okay, now notice I could set this as native, I could set it to none, and I could set it to emulated. Emulated is the default, and we'll take a look just to see what happens here. Okay, notice I have the seed component, it says app works. Let me look at the styles. I have a light coral color for H1. Let me look at the template. I'm just using H1. And 
I have a main style sheet which colors the, the body to plum. So, um, loosely speaking, we have a style here which is rendering the body tag of the web page. And I have a component style which renders H1, which defines the styles of H1. And H1 is part of the app component. The app component has an app root selector. So in my index.html, we have a body tag which is styled by this style. And then we have an app root tag, which corresponds to the app component, which is styled by this file. So let's see what happens here. Let me first look at my developer tools and let me render this okay so like I said the body tag is rendered by the page style the h1 is rendered by the by the um, Angular 4 application root component. Let me inspect this element and see what's going on here. Okay, so let's see. We looked at native. We, we I think we have it set to native mode, right? We're in native mode here. View encapsulation is um, native mode. It turns out I'm, I'm, I'm using Google right now. So Go Google seems to know what it's doing because of course the Google guys created Angular 4. Um, you might not see this all all correctly in the, in the browser. In other words, the, the native mode of some browsers might not be supporting the Shadow DOM properly. But, um, but let's just Ignore that for the moment. Okay, so in our app root component, it looks like it took the styles of my component and put it inside a hash shadow hyphen root DOM element. And so it's pretty much separated from what's in the header file. So notice the body tag styles are in the head. Which apply to all the pages. It should apply to all the styles in the page. But this style only applies to this component. I'm not using the, the components not using div. But it could. Let me try to do this just to see what happens. Okay, let's see what happened with app root. Now, I do have a div tag. I do have 
uh, NH1 tag and and my my div style is being applied to um, being applied to my um, my root my div tag within my angular application but it's not it's not affecting the outer page here okay so let's let's um, let's go one step further so let's look at the um, let's change the view encapsulation mode here uh, I'm gonna change it to none Okay, now here, what happened was the styles were now moved up to the head section, and they apply to the whole web page. So my component is is being displayed within the web page, and so it, it uses those styles. But now those styles can also be used by the web page. And so now I have to w worry about well, what happens if I if I define a different style and a different style sheet included somewhere else in the header, or uh, uh, you know whether it comes before this or after this, whatever. There's going to be conflicts. Okay, so now let's do one let's let's do one more example. Let's try what happens when you say emulated. It seems like I've got to restart the server. So let me just do this. And I don't want to waste my time refreshing cache because it just might not work. Now let's look at the code and see what happened. I have it set to emulate it, so I um, I notice here that my that I have these little um, attributes here called ng content hyphen c zero. And I notice that now my styles, although they're in the head section, it seems like it seems like the H1 style that I've defined, even though it's in a head section, is sort of like name scoped. It's sort of saying it really applies to the ng content hyphen C0. So it's going to apply. It's going to apply to my elements in app root, and it shouldn't apply to any h1 tags in my web page. So, um, so I guess we should think about um, you know what happens in the IE browser and all the other browsers. Uh, there will be from what I remember, IE did behave differently and did do things a little bit differently. I, I'm using Google because I want to make sure that um, that you know in native mode we get what we really should be seeing. So that that's that's good news. 
Okay, and that's it for this particular um, uh, d demo. I, I don't... Um, what I probably should do is in the future what I'll do is extend this and look at all the browsers because they will they will behave differently. But bottom line is we need to we need to make sure we understand Angular four and learn it and be able to produce production applications. And um, and right now we're using our polyfills and our shims and everything, and things will be changing over the next couple of months. And 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 hopefully someday we won't have to worry about all these things, um, and we could just in, you know point to a common directory ne network to our um, Angular version and um, and live happily ever, ever after without worrying about too many different things. But, um, but, okay, so anyway, stay tuned for more tutorials.